Hello and welcome everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. We are in video number 48 of our Lakshmi Khan series and today we need to talk about State Council of Minister. But before I start, let me remind you one thing. I told you when you start States part, that is part 6 of Indian Constitution, with each topic, have a comparative understanding, have a reflection what we discussed in part 5. For example, when we covered governor, we were comparing with president in part 5. Why? One is, many processes, provisions are same. So it would be cakewalk for you to understand this, to, to retain this. Second is, sometimes UPSC play on differences part. For example, difference between some parts of president and governor, right? So since we have discussed Union Council of Minister, processes and provisions are same. So here, you're going to revise as well. Okay, so as the Constitution of India provides a parliamentary system at the level of union as well as state. Yes, at the level of state as well. Although we don't use the word parliament for state legislature, but the system is parliamentary. Why? Because we have a council of minister at the level of state. We have this government being formulated on the basis of majority a party or coalition gets in state legislative assembly. Right? We have this Council of Ministers collectively responsible to Legislative Assembly. It means features of parliamentary system are reflected in state government or state legislature as well. Right? So in the state's union pattern, that is what I've explained to you, the Council of Ministers in the state is constituted and function the same way, as I told you, as the Council of Ministers at the level of center. Same way. What does it mean? First is constitution means how they're formed formed on the basis of absolute majority a party or coalition gets in state legislative assembly not council right please remember assembly MLAs not MLCs right then I also told you when it comes to chief minister in chief minister ch chapter we discussed chief minister can be an MLA or MLC and I told you it is same in case of PM. Like Manmohan Singh Ji was member of Rajya Sabha. Similarly, assembly and council, council consider upper house at the level of state legislature, right? But when it comes to forming government, you need majority in assembly. For example, you need majority in Lok Sabha at the level of union, right? Absolute majority. Now what constitutional provisions say? I hope you remember Article 163. We discussed it before as well. Because these topics, governor, CM, and council of minister, they are interlinked, right? There shall be a council of minister with chief minister as the head of head to aid and advise governor. I hope you remember. I also told you about Article 163, subclause 1 and subclause 2. Right? And what is the difference? Can you recall? If any question arises, and this is subclause 2, arises whether a matter falls within the governor's discretion or not, decision of the governor shall be final. This is subclause 2 of Article 163. And I told you, this kind of power is not available to honorable president. Okay, so that is why, please remember, because UPSC play on these things. These are the traps. The advice tendered by minister to the governor not be inquired into any court. Advice given to governor, you cannot inquire that. This is a kind of privilege which is given to minister. Okay. Now some of you might be thinking, so this is wrong. What if these ministers give wrong advice to governor? Advice which is unconstitutional. What is going to happen then? For once, governor can say, Council of Minister, please reconsider your advice. And if they fix on their advice, no, I'm not going to reconsider, then governor has to accept. But you need not to worry. Because if there's a legislative action or say executive action, which is unconstitutional, then we have our, our higher judiciary to interpret the constitution, right? And if such thing happened, then they, will, they are going to declare that particular law as null and void. But they need, need not to go into this advice. They can just struck down the output. Okay, I hope you got the logic now. Article 164, other provisions related to ministers. This also we discussed. 
द स्टेट ऑफ छत्तीसगढ़ झारखंड मध्य प्रदेश उड़ीसा दर शेल बी अ मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंचार्ज फॉर ट्रैवल आई टोल्ड यू हाउ मिनिस्टर्स आर अपॉइंटेड एक्चुअली वेन वन पर्सन कॉट मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट एम एल ए सपोर्टिंग हिम और हर नेम एज सी एम दैन गवर्नर से इज ओके नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू बी सी एम ऑफ दैट स्टेट नाउ दैट पर्सन गिवस अ लिस्ट टू हू गवर्नर सर प्लीज अपॉइंट दीज पीपल एज मिनिस्टर्स नाउ गवर्नर इज गोइंग टू अपॉइंट दोज पीपल एज मिनिस्टर्स राइट नाउ हू इज गोइंग टू गेट वॉट मिनिस्ट्री इज ऑल्सो अ डिसीजन ऑफ सी एम बिकॉज इट सी एम काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर राइट what kind of ministries cm needs that is also a sole decision of cm right but in case of these these states there's a mandatory clause that you need a dedicated minister in charge for tribal affairs and what's the logic logic is presence of considerable amount of number of tribal population here right welfare who in addition in charge of the welfare of scheduled castes and backward classes now a state of bihar was excluded from this list ओके सो यू पी एस सी समटाइम्स प्ले ऑन फैक्ट्स ना तो दिस कैन बी अ फैक्ट ऑन विच यू पी एस सी कैन प्ले ना द टोटल नंबर ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली प्लीज रिमेंबर फिफ्टीन परसेंट स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ वॉट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली वॉट डज इट मीन कंसिडर देर आर हंड्रेड सीट्स इन लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली मीन्स हंड्रेड एम एल एज राइट नाउ अ पार्टी गेट सिक्सटी सीट्स now that party is going to form the government now cm has you know this issue right uh, we have more than 60 say 60 mlas and i have to uh, make some some of them as ministers like uh, this was in discussion recently in punjab right so many mlas were saying no i am going to be minister i am going to be minister otherwise i am going to get angry or i may actually join another party so now we need a rule for that earlier actually this provision was not mentioned in constitution and that is why under the pressure of these minist these mlas sometimes these cms actually used to appoint so many people as ministers and then uh, th problem is you have to give each of them as a particular bungalow and the car the staff etc etc things right allowances privileges etc now apart from that if you have formed so many ministries don't you think it will be a troublesome job to get a policy action done because it may be possible for a particular work you need approval of three four departments if three four departments are attached to cons one minister then that one minister can act actually enact that policy in a faster manner but if there are multiple ministers uh, heading these is small small departments then it would be difficult for actually enacting that policy right so burden act check as well as administrative inconvenience and that is why 15% was made the standard it means out of 100 that is the total strength you can only make 15 ministers al along with cm okay the number of ministers including cm in state shall not be less than 12 so maximum is 15% and minimum is 12 for states okay 91st amendment act was that now a member either of how as i told you you can be a mla or mlc to become a minister right and even if you are not a member of M legislative assembly or legislative council and you want to become a minister and cm thinks yeah you you are going to be a good asset in his council of minister or her council of minister then such action can be taken but same rule applies that within 6 months you have to become part of or you can say member of one of these houses if there are two houses in that state legislature okay another is consider you are disqualified on the grounds of defection as i told you 10th schedule of indian constitution anti defection law right so if you are disqualified on the ground of defection now you are going to be removed or disqualified from the appointment of minister as well okay you cannot say oh sir for the appointment there is a rule that i can be there for 6 months without uh, being a member so allow me to be a minister although i am getting disqualified from no the moment you get disqualified from the house you are going to be removed from the post of minister okay 91st amendment act now the council of ministers shall be collectively responsible to legislative assembly what does it mean if no confidence motion is passed here then the whole council of ministry has to resign governor shall administer oath so who gives oath governor gives oath to these ministers minister who is not a member of the state legislature as i told you six months they can be there once conduct of business of the governor 
So I hope you remember in the governor chapter I told you the executive actions of the state government are taken in the name of governor, right? Like president is the executive head at the level of union. Similarly, we have uh, governor at the, as the executive head at the level of state. But nominal power, real power is in the hands of C CM. Executive action of the state shall be taken in the name of governor. Now, validity of an order. Consider you're a minister and you have signed a file for a particular say, policy, policy action. So is it mandatory that it need to be countersigned every time by the governor? No, that's not necessary. Okay. So what does it mean? You can actually have a noting on the file in the name of Honorable Governor of Uttar Pradesh or Madhya Pradesh, whichever state we are talking about. Uh, these, these policy actions have been decided to be taken. And I'm, I being a minister in charge of this particular ministry, I am giving this authority that this po policy need to be implemented and signed. So it will be considered, yes, governor has agreed. But in which category fi giving file to the governor is mandatory? In which category you need not to give file to the governor? So regarding this, rules and procedures can be decided. Governor shall make rules of the more convenient transaction of the allocation business. Convenient transaction, why? Because every file should not circulate towards governor. It will actually create unnecessary delay in policy actions, right? So such rule can be made by governor. But obviously on the advice of Council of Minister, 167 duties of Chief Minister, we discussed it, to communicate about administrative actions, to furnish details of legislative policies which uh, they are planning, their government are planning, right? As I told you, CM is like a bridge between State Council of Minister as well as governor, right? Rights of ministers as respect to the house. Consider there are two houses in that state. Legislative Council, Legislative Assembly. And you are a member of Legislative Assembly, you are MLA. So you have this right to be present in LC or LA both. Why? Because it may be possible some member of LC, Legislative Council, want to ask some question from you. Then you have to present there, give the answer, if such is the demand of the House, right? But you cannot vote in the other House. Vote can be given only in that House in which you are member. Right, same same clauses with Union Council of Minister. We discussed this. Nature of advice by the ministers, as I told you, advice tendered by the Council of Minister, they are mandatory for the governor. Right, reconsideration can be done for once. Right, otherwise they are mandatory. Although there are some discretionary areas as well. So Supreme Court ruled that Council of Minister must always exist to advise such is the importance of Council of Minister. Even after dissolution of State Legislative Assembly, consider a State Legislative Assembly has been dissolved, right? So it means now this particular Council of Ministers doesn't stand any chance to actually function formally. But this Council of Minister can work as a caretaker government. So this is going to be caretaker government. The word is may. Please remember UPSC can play here. UPSC can use the statement and say the existing ministry means they, they can attach this particular statement with that and they say it is mandatory that at any time, every time, there will be a state council of minister. They can play with you along these lines. But please remember the word is may. Means it is possible. It can be done. Appointment of ministers. So chief minister is appointed by governor, then chief minister gives list to the governor and then governor appoints other ministers. Responsibility of the ministers, as I told you, they swim and sink together. If no confidence motion is passed, it means this government stands no chance to continue as government. Then ministers have to resign. Same as case of parliament here, yeah? Lok Sabha. Council of ministers can advise the governor to dissolve legislative assembly before time as well. Right? There can be re-elections. Does not represent the views of the electorate faithfully and call for fresh elections. So fresh election they can call for. It is duty of every minister to stand by the cabinet. What does it mean? Consider, you have some independent views and you have read article 19, subclause 1, subclause A and you, you are saying I am, I am having my freedom of speech and expression. Now you are a minister, but the cabinet means the key ministers, cabinet minister, the key ministers, they decided no, we have this stand on this policy, but you are having different stand. Now, can you actually continue as a minister in this in this case? 
it is duty of every minister to stand by the cabinet and support them both within and outside the state legislature. And if you are saying, no, I'm going to use my freedom of speech and expression, I'm not agreeing with what CM is saying, I'm not agreeing with what other cabinet ministers are saying, and I'm going to raise voice against my own government. If you do so, you may be asked to resign, buddy. Means if any minister disagrees with the cabinet decision and is not prepared to defend, he must resign. Okay. I mean, some of you would say, sir, it is actually, you know, um, freedom of speech and expression are being compromised. You may say that. But please remember, when you are a minister, you are a minister in CM's Council of Ministers. CM is the leader. You have to uphold his her vision, his objective. If you are not fulfilling that, you'll, you'll be asked to resign. Individual responsibility. Contain the principle of individual responsibility. Governor can remove a minister at a time. But on what basis? If CM advises so, right? Or if that person is disqualified, right? Then obviously that person is going to go. Or it may be possible that uh, now this particular council of minister is not having majority in the legislative assembly. Enjoy the confidence on the advice of chief minister. On that advice of chief minister, governor can actually remove. Okay. In case of difference of opinion and dissatisfaction with the performance of a minister, in this case also CM may ask you to resign, right? Please remember, UPSC can play on these part. UPSC may try to confuse you between governor's power to remove minister, its cases, and governor's power to remove a member of state legislature and its cases. Please note it down and identify the differences okay and let me know in comments that so that i can be sure yeah you are actually giving attention to these intricacies these details right general understanding many students are going to have but you have to become you know that kind of master that any question which th is thrown upon you you're not going to mark it wrong such should be the clarity because everything is logical no legal responsibility as at this level of center, no provision in the constitution for the legal responsibility of the minister in the state. It is not required that an order governor for a public may be countersigned by the governor. Court are barred from inquiring into the nature of advice, as I told you. That court are not going to uh, barge into the advice, why you have given this advice, right? Whatever advice they have given, if you are not agreeing with the decision, just declare this null and void if it is in constitution. As simple as that. But you cannot take legal action on the minister that why you have given this advice. Right? This protection has been given. Composition of council of minister. Constitution has not specified any size. Right? Does not specify any size of the state council of minister. Please remember, it's, it can be a question. That it is determined by CM. Like at the center in the states to council. Why I'm saying doesn't specify any size? Some of you might be thinking, sir, uh, Just you just said about 91st amendment you said about 15 percent maximum so uh, don't you think uh, that 15 percent strength of the total legislative assembly we need at least these many ministers no i've said maximum ministers can be 15 percent of the total strength of legislative assembly i've not said you need 15 percent that's a decision of cm cm may say no i'm going to have just 10 ministers i'm going to have say so minimum is 12 so i'm going to have 13 ministers I'm going to have 15 minutes. That is total discretion of CM. Okay. But specific strength, what is going to be specific strength? That is not clearly mentioned in our constitution. There are three categories of ministers. Same at the level of union. You have cabinet ministers. You have minister of state. Then you have deputy ministers. Right. So these, these are the details. Cabinet ministers, these are the main ministers. Means like the part of inner circle of CM. Right, having important portfolios, most important portfolios, home, education, finance, agriculture, and so forth. Their members of the cabinet attend its meetings and play an important role in deciding policies. Actually, from among these uh, council of ministers, real power is in the hands of cabinet ministers. Their responsibilities extend for the entire gamut of state government. Prime responsibility is with them. Minister, minister of state, they can be given independent charge or they can be just minister of state. Okay. When I say independent charge, it means they will be having sole responsibility of the respective ministry, respective departments, right? 
Then we have deputy ministers. Deputy ministers are attached to other ministers. They're not given independent charge. Attached to the cabinet ministers. Now cabinet. What is cabinet? As I told you, in case of union, this is a smaller body. It's like the nucleus of the council of ministers, main body. Highest decision making body, chief policy formulation, supreme executive authority, chief coordinator of state government, advisory body to the government. Real power actually lies with cabinet, you can say, a group of cabinet ministers. And cabinet committees have standing committee as well as ad hoc committee. A standing committee are permanent, means at any point of time you need policy decisions on these, these areas. For example, cabinet committee we discussed in case of union. Right. Ad hoc committee, they are formed time to time. When they are gi uh, given their advice, then they can be. The council of minister in the state shall be collectively responsible to the governor. Do you think that statement is true? Collectively responsible to governor or collectively responsible to state legislative assembly? Tell me, because you have to identify the correct one. The state minister shall hold the office during the pleasure of the governor of state. Who appoints these ministers? Governor appoints. Who removes? Governor removes. Same is ca the case of President and Union Council of Ministers. Right? That is correct. The number of ministry ministers, including the chief minister in a state, shall not be less than 12. I have just told you. So it means first statement is wrong because here it should have been a state legislative assembly. So that is why 2 and 3 are correct means B is the answer. Right? Consider following statement, you have to identify the correct. Legislative council of the state in India can be larger in size than the half of the legislative assembly of the particular state. So our next topic is state legislature. Okay, In that we are going to discuss the statement, but as of now you should know that strength of legislative council cannot be more than one third of the total strength of legislative assembly. That's a rule. Governor of state nominates the chairman of state legislative council of that particular state. When it comes to state legislative council, the chairman is the elected position. Means from among the members of state legislative council, one member is appointed or elected as chairman. So in this case, both statements are incorrect. It means answer should be neither, neither one and two. The size of state legislative council cannot be more than one third of the members of the state legislative assembly. That's a rule under Article 171. We are going to discuss it in next chapter as well. Chairman of legislative council elected by the members. Okay, then this is not appointed by the governor. Okay, nominated by governor. Right, it is an elected position. In which of the following matters the power and status of council are broadly equal? To that of assembly so we are talking about state legislative councils council equal to state legislative assembly so in which area they have equal say approval of ordinance issued by the governor they have equal say with respect to ratification of the constant assembly no legislative assembly has say selection of ministers including chief minister tell me don't you think person can be a minister or chief minister even if that member is member of, that person is member of state legislative council like yogi Aitanath was member of state legislative council so this is correct with respect to passing of no confidence, no, obviously, no confidence motion is actually a tool, a procedure, a device of legislative assembly, not of legislative council. That is incorrect. So, 1 and 3 means B is the answer. Correct? So, I hope now this is clear to you. See you in the next chapter. Till then, take care, keep learning, keep growing. This PDF is going to be available in Shashank Tyagi for you. If you have any doubt, you can shoot me a message on my personal Insta, shashank.powerbeam. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Take care.